Hello, this is Craig Wesco recording for TCGplayer.com. And today we're going to be showcasing this blue red Artificer Dragon Improvised deck that Chris Finnell and I built in preparation for the Pro Tour. Uh, neither of us ended up actually playing it, but it was one of our front runners leading up to the Pro Tour. And I think there's a lot of interesting things going on here. Uh, I was actually asked by several people on some of the several of the, the pro teams if uh, if I was actually on this deck because I went 5-0 in a Magic Online League with it um, in a few days before the Pro Tour. And so the deck list got published and all the pro teams were like, wow, this is like some interesting deck that like, you know, clearly everyone knows I'm Nakatos for life on Magic Online. So uh, they're like, yeah, Wesco 5 0 with this like really strange deck and so a few other people tried it out uh, nobody played it to my knowledge but uh it's kind of an interesting little wrinkle right before the the pro tour uh we ended up going 5-0 in the very first league that we played it in and then we went 4-1 in the second league that we played it in so it won nine out of the first 10 matches that we played with the deck so we were pretty pretty high on it we uh it started losing a little bit more in some of the uh, in our future testing after these two leagues uh, but we were trying out a bunch of other stuff and uh, maybe took the deck in a, in a in a bit of a wrong direction in some of the future leagues. But anyway, uh, so I wanted to go back and uh, show you the original two builds of the deck, the ones that went 5-0 and 4-1 in the two leagues, and then show you some of the matches from those two leagues, since we did actually play against most of the top decks in the format in those leagues, and we were just beating them. Uh, so the idea of the deck... Uh, there's a few things going on. The main card is Inventor's Goggles. And Inventor's Goggles allows us to do a couple of things. One, it makes all of our artificers bigger. So we have Ether Swooper, we have Ether Chaser, we have Pia Nalar, we have uh, Whirler Virtuoso, and we have Maverick Thopterist, all of which are artificers. So that's a bunch of artificers in the main deck. That's, uh, what, 15-ish? We have 3, 6, 10, 14, 15. So we have 15 artificers in the main deck. Uh, the other thing is we improvise. So our main artificer is the Maverick Thopterist, which improvises, which means you can tap an artifact to cast it. And we also have Free Jam Regent, which has improvise. So we want to have a whole bunch of artifacts in the deck to make all these improvised cards cheaper. So the Goggles makes improvise cheaper, and so does Bomat Courier. And in the second build, we replace this with Merchant's Dockhand. Uh, I'm not really sure which is better. They're about equal, in my opinion. Um, then we also have the, the Swooper and the Chaser. Basically, similar cards. One flies, one has First Strike, and is a little bigger on the ground. Um, but basically, they're Artificers, so the Goggles connect with them right away, making them very formidable threats, especially against the aggro decks, like... What's the mono red deck going to do against a turn two, two, four flyer? Like that basically blocks all their stuff and doesn't die to any of their spells. So that's really effective against them. A three, three first striker, well, you better take your turn off to abrade it or lightning strike it because you're not attacking through it. And uh, part of Kirin is kind of a way to, uh, to get in a whole bunch of damage against decks that aren't the aggressor. So against decks that aren't, say, mono red or Mardu vehicles or whatever then turn two Heart of Kirin is probably our best play. Um, because then we play a Virtuoso or a Pia the following turn. Um, or if we had a turn one Goggles, we could play like a, a Chaser on turn three to and put the Goggles on it to crew the Heart and attack on turn three. So we have a lot of ways to um, attack with Heart of Kirin on turn three if we're not on the back foot against an aggressor, a more aggressive deck. And when we are, we have goggles, then our two drops, or the swooper and the chaser, do a great job of playing defense on turn two. And uh, if we do play one of them on turn two, whether we're on offense or defense, when we attack, we make a servo, because it produces the two energy to make that servo and that first attack just on its own. And that gives us the artifact, uh, so that if we go, say, turn one, Bomat Courier or Inventor's Goggles, turn two, swooper or chaser, then, or, or even Heart of Kirin, turn three, we can play Maverick Thopterist. So that's like a really, really powerful play. Turn three, getting 
a pair of one-on flyers, and then a two-two, or even maybe a three-four. That's basically a good play against pretty much any deck in the format, whether we're on defense or offense. So that's kind of the the the, the nut draw of the deck, or the way we're when the deck is doing what it's supposed to do. That's basically how it plays out. We play like one drop, two drop, three drop, and then Thopterist is almost always a four drop. Uh, if it's not a three drop, it it's rare that we just have no artifacts to to improvise to get it out early. Um, so then basically our five drop slot is Glory Bringer, which is just basically one of the best five drops in the format, especially in a deck like this that wants to play a bunch of setup cards. So there's not a lot of space in the deck for a bunch of removal spells. Uh, you know, we can't afford to play like a bunch of sprays and abrades main deck and harness lightnings or whatever, uh, because then we're just diluting our deck and we have a lot of really awkward draws of like removal spell, removal spell, goggles, and lands and like that just that hand just doesn't do anything so we need to have a sufficiently high density of threats especially um artificer threats for the goggles and then once we have the sufficient uh number of threats we need to have enough artifacts um to make these improvised creatures good and so that's where uh since we we want threats and we want artifacts like ballista does both those things and glory bringer can kill things and be a threat and so uh, that's why i chose those two threats as the uh our main removal cards and then the one of braid was just because uh we we do need uh removal spells you know i just felt like that we, it was okay to run like one of braid and i think in the second version we upped it to two of braids i think that's kind of the right number we want like nine to ten removal spells main deck including the, the Ballistas, the Glory Bringers, and the Abrades. Uh, in post-board matchups against the aggro decks, we want more copies of Abrade and Spray. That's why they're in the sideboard. And then against controlling decks, we want the Counter Magic and the Third Heart of Kirin. And then the Crook of Condemnation is basically just for the graveyard decks, most notably the, the God Pharaoh's Gift deck. Uh, in the second version, I believe we ran, well, let's look. In the second version, we ran yep, Sentinel Totem over the Crook of Condemnation. And that was mostly a, a curve consideration. We just want another one drop because a one mana artifact uh, is a lot harder to come by. There's a lot fewer good one mana artifacts than there are two. And on two, we have Chaser, Swooper, and Heart as two mana artifact plays. And uh, yeah, and then. We just wanted more one drops, so that's why we made that change. And then we cut a negate for a Sahili ride to try it out, and it, it was actually pretty good. Sahili's pretty good. And then the other change we made was Dock Hand replacing Bomat Courier, which I think those are those two are about equal. We cut a Swooper and a Chaser for another Braid and a Pia Nalar. Pia was good. I like the second Pia. Um, everything else I think stayed the same. We added uh, a couple of hubs um, just to assist with our energy and fix our mana a little bit. Uh, but yeah, basically the, the the gist of this deck is improvise, play out some uh, Thopterists, hook them up with the goggles, start being aggressive, make a bunch of tokens, go wide, go big in the air. Um, it just kind of, it, it can do a lot of different things and it could take on a lot of different forms. And one of the cards that really allows the deck to come together is this new card, Unclaimed Territory. So if you name Artificer, then it basically allows our splash to be free. So uh, everything is red except, well, Swooper blue, that's an Artificer. Virtuoso, that's blue, that's an Artificer. And our, our third blue card is Thopterist, and that's an Artificer. So main deck, Unclaimed Territory, can help us cast literally any of our blue spells. So that's a really cool thing. And then it can also help us cast our Chaser or our Pia. If we happen to draw a hand of like just islands, uh, so it's really only until sideboard games that we need uh, the extra blue mana. But between four island, four canal, and four uh, two spire of industry, that's still ten blue sources for five blue spells or six blue spells. Um, is it five blue spells? Five blue spells. So that's that's kind of enough, you know. 
And then uh, another thing that sometimes happens is the second unclaimed territory, you just name dragon. So it also helps you get your second red to cast your free jam regent and your glory bringer. And another interesting thing about free jam regent is uh, interestingly enough, sometimes it comes down for two mana, sometimes three mana, usually four mana. Um, but it'll come down the turn before the opponent can cast glory bringer. And then when they cast glory bringer and they attack, well, even though it's a four toughness creature, they can't kill it with their glory bringer because glory bringer says four damage to target non dragon creature. So they can't kill dragon free jam regent with their glory bringer. So basically the only targets for glory uh, for a, yeah, a glory bringer on the opponent's side, well, they can't, kill our heart because we're just not going to crew it before the glory bringer attacks they can't kill any of our dragons so they can only kill basically our our our, our dudes like our our thopterist and our virtuoso and our swooper and our chaser and our uh thopters and our servos and our ballista basically all the creatures we don't really care about and if we have goggles on a virtuoso it's a three five so you can't even kill that if we have two goggles, you can't kill anything with that glory bringer. You're you're just killing a token. Like, all right, fine. You know, like we don't care. You can kill our token with your dragon once every other turn. Like, so glory bringer is basically just not that good against us. Um, the way we have this deck set up, and that was very intentional, given that a lot of the teamer decks are running four main deck glory bringers. We wanted to be really good against their their best creature. So we're kind of uh, we don't actually play against team or energy in any of these uh, these matches, but it's it's a matchup that Finale was saying he was something like seven and zero against. I lost to it a few times, but he said that his plan was just like basically, you know, play out creatures and dragon them. And uh, the dock hand was also very good in that matchup in in version two because you could just activate the dock hand every turn, and that's your way of kind of uh, taking over the mid game. Um, but anyway, this match, the, this deck, it has a lot of good matchups across the across the board, and uh, it has a plan against control decks. It has a plan against aggro decks, and it has a plan against the energy decks. Uh, and it's also a very unique sort of rogue deck that, if you're if you're not interested in playing one of the decks that did well at the Pro Tour, you're kind of tired of energy, you don't want to play Ramanap Red again. Well, this is a great deck to try out. It's doing something a little bit different. And, uh, you know, kind of in Craig Wesco uh, fashion, um, kind of competing on a slightly different axis with this, uh, with this creature deck with, uh, with all these plans against all the decks. So check out the article, the written portion of the article for some sideboard plans. And uh, let's watch the videos and see this deck in action.